Welcome back to Earth Sky. I'm Deborah Bird here live on August 15th with my friend Bob King, aka Hello, Astro Bob. Hey, and we are here to talk about shadows. Yes, especially shadows that are almost a billion miles away from the Earth at the planet Saturn. Yeah, but Bob, I wanted to start with this image of the Earth. So um, I hope you can all see this shadow of the moon. So look up toward the top part of the earth and you'll see that kind of dark blob on the earth here. And that is the moon's shadow during a total solar eclipse. So the event that we're talking about is in fact, uh, very much like a total solar eclipse, except that it's happening at Saturn. And there it is. We have a picture here taken by the Cassini spacecraft some years ago. And out of the frame is the moon Titan, which is Saturn's largest moon. It's about 3,200 miles across, and it is casting a most beautiful stretchy shadow on the cloud tops of Saturn. And that thin, there's kind of like a line that's bisecting the planet here, and those are Saturn's rings. So, so the Cassini spacecraft must have been going through the ring plane at the point where it took this picture of Titan's shadow. Yes, and that's actually Saturn's, the ring shadow too. So we have two shadows here, the rings with the- Oh, that's the ring shadow. Plus Titan and its shadow. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, but let's look at the, what's like, what's happening right now is that we are seeing Titan's shadow from Earth. Uh, you need a telescope to see it, but here's what it looks like. Oh, that is such a great image. And this is a fairly recent photo. It was taken this summer. And you can see Titan, which has a beautiful orange color there off to the left. And from, we are looking at it from Earth and seeing the sun shining past Titan and casting a shadow off to the right onto Saturn's cloud tops. So the really cool thing is if you could be there at Saturn within that shadow, say in a spacecraft going around the planet, you would see an eclipse of the sun. That's right. And not just of any old ordinary eclipse of the sun like we see on Earth. So, you know, on Earth, we always talk about how it's such a cool coincidence that the sun in our sky and the moon in our sky are almost exactly the same size. And so the moon just covers the sun completely during a total solar eclipse. But at Saturn, if you were uh, at Saturn's cloud tops, looking up at Titan, and instead of looking from Earth, if you were looking up at Titan from the cloud tops, you would see a total eclipse of the sun. But but Titan is, we both, you and I both found the same number, Bob, four point right. five times bigger than the sun. So uh, great big old boom of an eclipse. Right. Yeah. That giant moon just totally devours that tiny sun. The sun is just a tenth the size at Saturn as it is from the Earth. So it's a little pinpoint in the sky, a little pinhead. And Titan, because you're at the planet, is so much bigger. So you've got this fairly large moon taking and completely covering the sun, probably for, well, not just for minutes, but it actually takes hours for titan to go from one side of the sun to the other so it's behind titan for a long time and what we see on earth of course we're on the opposite end we get to see that shadow gradually move across the cloud tops of saturn uh, a complete titan eclipse we call it a transit from here on earth because we see it from a different perspective that transit from the shadow one side of the globe to the next takes approximately like six eight hours something like that it's a very long time and these shadow transits uh, of Titan and some of the other moons of, of Saturn as well, they are really exciting events for amateur astronomers. So Brian Martin in Riverside, California, caught this view uh, on August the 3rd, and he wrote, I waited 28 years for this event, and it's hard to believe it's here. So these these events where we can see uh, Titan's shadow cross Saturn, they actually happen 
uh, twice in a 28 year period. Isn't that right, Bob? It's every about every 15 years. Yeah, about every, I mean, in order to see one of these uh, transits, the Earth has to be lined up with Saturn's equator or close so that when we look across the vast distance, we can see shadows, the shadow of Titan crossing the disk. And that happens for a season, sort of a shadow season, we call it, that lasts for just some months, right around the time that Saturn's rings are nearly invisible, almost edge on. And that, as you know, occurs every 15 years or so. So if you miss a Titan shadow season like this, you have to wait 15 more years for it to happen. So yeah, yeah, I can appreciate his joy at finally seeing and photographing that. Yeah, and probably what he meant by that 28 years is that, you know, first you would see the shadow. I mean, I think this is true. First, you would see the shadow in the northern hemisphere of Saturn. And then the net, after 15 years, you would see it in the southern hemisphere of Saturn. Is yeah, that correct? It, does, it switches it up. Well, it, yes, it goes, it kind of moves from south to north through the season. It's uh, very interesting. The early, we, actually, there was, it started last oh, fall. Oh. for European, for Eastern Hemisphere observers, because Saturn was in daylight for us for those sets of shadow transits. But this summer, our hemisphere is favored. Saturn is in a dark sky when they happen. And Titan is moving ever northward as we go through the shadow season. And by October, it'll be off the disk, and that'll be the end of it for another 15 years. Only 15 years. Oh, I'm not sure I've got that many left. <laughs> yes, you I'm, making a special, you I'm making a special effort to see as many of these as I can through my telescope. Let's talk about the transits that are coming up. Yes, we have four left. This is the full list of transits that were visible for our hemisphere, for North America. Uh, you can see we've already been through a few. The next one coming up is August 19th, the morning. The times here are universal times, so you can translate 5.52. That's 12.52 a.m. It starts. Titan will be right in the middle of Saturn, mid-transit at 3.01 a.m. And then the transit ends at 5 a.m. So you can see that's, I said, six to eight hours, but it's about five hours approximately for that shadow to move from one side of Saturn to the other. And then there's one in the September, there's another one in October, and then it wraps up. Yeah, and I love these images that you provided, Bob. These are, these are so cool. Yeah, you can really see the how it gradually moves further to the north because the orient the planets are always in motion. And so our perspective on Saturn is changing over the months. The rings open up a little bit, they close a little bit, and so does. And during this time, Titan's shadow gradually moves northward, northward. And then finally, you can see that, Deb, on the October 6th. It's at the very edge of the disk, and it's gone after that. But the moon itself will still cross the planet even after October, Titan itself. But it is much harder to see the moon against the cloud tops than its dark shadow. And And... And for those who don't know, Titan is the largest of Saturn's moons. It's a big, it's a big oh, moon. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, our moon is what, 2,100 and some miles and Titan is 3,200. So it's what, uh, almost half a time again, as big as the moon, but very different from our moon. Our moon has barely most tenuous atmosphere, whereas Titan has a very dense atmosphere. It even has lakes on its surface lakes that are filled with not water because it's really cold there but filled with liquid natural gas like ethane and methane Ooh, it's chilly i don't know if i'd want to go for a dip <laughs> but it looks great from this distance debbie when you can look out and see that little moon and you get a really good sense looking through the telescope of how three-dimensional the scene is you see the globe of saturn you see titan off to one side see its shadow, you can sense just where the sun is almost in the sky there and picture that eclipse in your mind's eye. I think one reason these events are so beautiful when you're out there observing them is that you really get that sense of the three-dimensionality of space. You do, and it, it, it just sort of it presents itself through the telescope uh, looking it at does. it. Just gorgeous. It does. I'm hoping to see this next one on the 19th. I 
believe it or not, I have not seen in all of the years I've been observing my first shadow transit happened this past July. And now there have been three. I've been three for three at this point. So I'm really looking forward to make it four for four. <laughs> after You are on a roll now. I'm on a roll after decades of <laughs> not seeing it because either it was cloudy, I didn't know about it, it was happening on the other side of the world. So it really was a thrill to see my first one. Now I can't let's get it up. <laughs> that's right. Let's talk about the one on the 19th. Yeah, here you can see the in this, uh, you can see where there are other moons too. Saturn has many, many moons. And Titan is off to the upper left of the planet to its northeast. And there's this little tiny pinpoint shadow cast on the cloud tops. This is mid-transit or mid-eclipse, as it were, from Saturn's point of view. Starts late. They all do. They start after midnight and they end at 5 a.m. So you got to set your alarm if you want to view this from the telescope. However, we do have an opportunity, which I'm not sure if we're going to present it now or in a few slides, for you to see this online. Oh, um, yes. Let's put that up. Let's see. Boom. Tell us about this. Uh, there is a group, it's called the North Central Region of the Astronomical League, and they uh, there's some amateur astronomers there who are really intensely interested in watching these transits, and they're going to have a Zoom meeting and present their images uh, during the next transit. And if you go to this link, you will see, uh, it will give you another link shortly before 3 a.m. Central Time. You go to that link, and then it's live. And there'll be people there. Hopefully, they'll be showing their images. You know, if they have clear skies, so you'll be able to actually see that Titan transit for yourself. And that'll be on that so, work. So again, it's very early, like you see here in this image. So that's the morning of the nineteenth. They're mm -hmm. going to be doing this. Yeah, right there, ncral.org/zoom. And so their images, it's it's almost going to be like seeing it in real time. Something like that. We're assuming that somebody will have clear skies and be able to process an image and put it up. But uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I certainly invite you to stop by if you're, you know, what else are you doing at three o'clock in the morning? Probably not much, so head on over. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, again, go there. Uh, Some of us are sleeping, Bob. So, I know, I know, I won't be. <laughs> But do go there. They open the link. They put the post a live link ten minutes before three. Okay, um, and let's just show this one because that's the telescopic view on that night. Is that what this is? Um, this was from a previous transit, the last one. A oh, previous one. Seen. And so yes, this is Saturn. Just you know, you got the, you, you can see a little bit of the cloud, but this is what it looks like through the telescope. I tried to show it as clearly as I could, how narrow the ring tilt is. You can see these vague kind of brownish gray bands. There's Titan off to the right. Get the sense of the shadow being cast. And the shadow really looks like a pinpoint. And to see it, I had to use a higher magnification, about 250 times magnification. And I thought it was worth a sketch, and so I put this together. And I, now I just, I see this one coming up, and I just have to show this one. Oh, yeah, so that's cool. This is so cool. This oh. is not Saturn. This is uh, actually uh, any, well, I'm going to call it an eclipse. It's an eclipse, <laughs> sort, of, sort of an eclipse of the sun uh, as seen from the planet Mars by Mars's uh, large moon Phobos. You know, Debbie, this totally needs a soundtrack. You know, something very dramatic as background music, don't you think? I do, I do. And I think it was the, um, I'm not sure which of the rovers it was. This is a, this is not a, a make-believe image. This is a real image taken by one of the Mars rovers. I think it was Perseverance. Perseverance, yeah. Yeah, it does. The quality looks quite good. And you can see sunspots on the sun in this, too. Yes. Just imagine, this is what it actually looks like. If you were standing on the surface of Mars, you would see that dark silhouette of Phobos passing, this giant rock passing in front of the sun, you could sense it with just no binoculars. You just put on a solar filter and you'd see that happening. Gosh, makes me want to go to Mars right now. I wonder how, I wonder how, I guess 
from Mars, certainly you'd need a solar filter yep. to protect your eyes. I wonder if you would need a solar filter from Saturn. I think so. You would still be yes, a, a tenth the size, but the sun is just that intense glare. And it's a good question, though. Good question. I, I can't answer it for sure. But yeah, I, I don't know the answer. Just to, to be on either. the safe side, next time we're at Saturn, Debbie, I'm bringing some eclipse glasses. Just in case. <laughs> Okay, me too. And so we're showing this image just to show that there are eclipses happening all through the solar system. And the reason for that is that when the planets and moons formed, most of them formed in the single flat plane around the sun. And so they're still orbiting more or less uh, in that flat plane. You know they're not they're not just all over the place they're they're more or less in this flat plane of the solar system so it's, every so often one from one planet you see something eclipse something else from another planet aren't we the lucky ones huh it's, it's such a nice relatively flat solar system so that whenever you look along the line of sight of the planet you know over time planets are lining up passing near each other making these beautiful either eclipses, transits, or conjunctions, just like, Debbie, the one that we just had recently of Jupiter and Venus was spectacular. Oh, yeah. And also so the result amazing. of that solar system that you just described. That's right. Um, so let's see here. Where are we? Oh, we want to show one more thing before we go, and that's this. Yeah, speaking of lineups of planets and things, this is coming up. This will be on August 19th, which is next Tuesday morning. The moon has been waning over the past nights, and it will be a beautiful crescent with Earth shine showing. You can see the full outline of the moon, and it will form sort of an arc with Jupiter, Venus, and the newcomer planet in the morning sky, Mercury. And this view is shown for about an hour before sunrise looking towards the east. Um, and if it's cloudy this morning, no worries. Go out the next morning. The moon will have slid down. It'll be right next to Venus. So it'll still be worth looking. And then the next morning, keep going on the 21st, it'll be next to Mercury. So another few mornings in a row here, I think we're going to be losing a little bit of sleep for the sake of beauty. That it's, it's going to be, you know, it's been, the morning skies have been beautiful. And they're going to continue to be beautiful with this little crescent moon moving past these planets. So thank you, Bob. Yeah. Thank thanks. you so much for coming today. Well, thank you. You want to tell much. people, yeah, yeah, you are so welcome. You want to tell people where they can find you? Um, they can find me on Facebook at, it's just type in Astro Bob, put a space between the two words. Uh, it's Astro Bob's Astronomy for Everyone. Thank you. Thank you. One Earth, one Earth, one Sky, Earth Sky. <laughs>